Welcome to your Tuesday edition of Forecast Lab. Before we dive in today, I want to take a moment to recognize it is Veterans Day here in the U.S. To everybody that served, thank you for your commitment and sacrifice. I'm fortunate to count myself among that community, and honestly, a lot of the forecasting we discuss on this show comes directly from those experiences. Just a little background about myself so you know more about that. I was a meteorologist in the Air Force. I was honor graduate from observing school, distinguished graduate from forecasting school. That was 1,100 hours of classroom time and probably the most rigorous course in the Air Force. We started out with a class of 30 and only 13 graduated. I went on to forecast at Dias Air Force Base for the B-1Bs and also U.S. Forces Korea and United Nations Command. I served at the Central Forecasting Facility in Seoul. I also did three years at the Tonopah Test Range in Nevada. Initially, it was a classified assignment. We supported F-117 stealth fighters, and we flew up every week on contract 727s. So enough about myself. Today is that day, and if you've served, you know that you're part of something that does not end when you put away that uniform for the very last time. Today, things are quiet around the country as we shift gears and start focusing on a train of weather systems that will be coming in from the Pacific starting on Thursday. The surface analysis late this afternoon showed a large high-pressure area across the southeastern U.S., that is the remnants of that polar outbreak that came southeast over the past few days. We have this Alberta clipper coming through the Midwest, which will continue to move eastward, but very little precipitation associated with that. The dew points around that system are in the 20s and 30s. Not very much going on in the western states. The big changes are coming from the Pacific. This system down south associated with a cutoff low and this other mainstream system in the North Pacific, those will link up over the next couple of days and move into California and Oregon. At 250 millibars, about 34,000 feet at jet stream level, we see one large trough extending from Quebec into the Atlantic Ocean. Deep southerly flow bringing an atmospheric river into the Maritimes, Newfoundland, and Labrador. And we have an assortment of wind rainfall and snowfall warnings all through that part of Canada. Ridging in the western U.S., but we have this trough making its way towards the northwestern U.S. This southerly trough will be absorbed into the main trough, and gradually the entire west coast area will come under increasing clouds and rain. In the northeastern U.S., a vast area of cold advection still in place. Another disturbance heading down the backside of the trough across the Great Lakes. The main ridge is still well out to the west. As we head into nighttime, you can see that the satellite imagery switches over to grayscale infrared. Can't really see much what's going on there, but we can switch over to the pure infrared channel with enhancement. And now things are a little bit more clear. You can see that disturbance working through the Great Lakes. And to really analyze the structure, we go over to the water vapor imagery. And that might tell us a little bit more. It was quite cold across the northeastern U.S., 30s through the Great Lakes and Midwest, the northern Appalachians, 40s along the east coast into the Ohio River Valley. Gale watches and warnings in effect all along the northeastern coast today and overnight. Lake effect snows continue around Lake Erie and Ontario. For tonight, we're going to see temperatures falling into the 20s across much of the Appalachians, 30s along the coast, the cold spot Saranac Lake. 19, and northern New Hampshire also 19. For tomorrow, much warmer as we start to see some 40s and 50s, a few 60s popping up in Virginia. For the southeast, cold weather, and they are under cold advection as well. It's too dry to support those cumuliform cloud fields that we have further up north, but offshore, look at that, streets of cumulus and stratocumulus. As that cold air pours out over the warmer waters, gains moisture and instability from beneath. Temperatures today ranged from the 40s in the Carolinas over to Atlanta, 50s on the Gulf Coast and pretty far into Florida, 
57 for a high at Orlando, cold day to be at Disney World, and upper 60s in Miami. Red flag warnings were posted all today for much of southwest and central Florida due to gusty north winds and low relative humidity. For tonight, it's going to be another cold one. Freeze warnings all through southern Georgia into northern Florida. The freeze warnings go as far south as Gainesville, Ocala, Perry, Tallahassee. Lows will fall to 28 in some spots. Frost advisories as far south as the outskirts of Orlando into Lake Sumter in Pasco counties. But a big warm-up for tomorrow, 60s just about everywhere, a few spots of 70 around Albany, Georgia. In the southern plains, temperatures warm back up into the 70s throughout Texas, 80s showing up around the Caprock, Clovis, and the Pecos River Valley. Red flag warnings were in effect across a large chunk of central and south Texas. That's due to brisk south winds picking up as that return flow gets established. Relative humidity is still down around 15%. And that area has been in a drought. For tonight, not as much of that chill. A mix of 40s and 50s in most areas, 50 for Dallas and 51 for San Antonio. For tomorrow, definitely a warm-up. A little bit cooler in the panhandles, but lots of 80s. South of Dallas, 81 for San Antonio, and mid 80s starting to show up in the Rio Grande Valley up to Laredo. In the northern plains, a very wide range of temperatures as we're on the backside of that polar air mass. We have 30s and 40s in the Great Lakes, increasing to 70s in western Kansas and Colorado. 60s extended from the Ozarks up to Nebraska and into the northwestern high plains. For tonight, we're going to see lows mostly in the 20s and 30s. The freeze line running from about Green Bay to Minneapolis down through Iowa and into Nebraska. A freeze also expected in some parts of Colorado around Lyman and Lamar. Temperatures for tomorrow, much the same as today, maybe knocking a few degrees off the numbers. And then Thursday, it's going to rebound with very warm temperatures, lots of 70s on the high plains. In the southwestern region, fair, but definitely an increase in clouds on the west coast. We saw afternoon temperatures ranging from the 60s in the Rockies and Great Basin area to near 90 in the southwestern deserts. Los Angeles was expecting 80 and San Francisco 71. Just briefly, I'm going to fill you in on those temperatures overnight, then we're going to get to the warnings. So for tonight, 30s and the Rockies, the Four Corners, and 50s in the deserts. Then for tomorrow, about the same as today in most areas, California seeing some colder temperatures as that weather system approaches. Then we do have those advisories and watches to talk about. That focuses on the Sierras, mostly above 6,000 feet. We have winter weather advisories in purple in the central and northern Sierras, winter storm warning further south. That starts Wednesday night, goes into Thursday, and into late Thursday night. There could be 6 to 12 inches of snow with 24 inches in the higher elevations and some very strong winds up near the summits. We're looking at winds up to 100 miles an hour in the northern Sierras. Also, as that system approaches, wind. Wind advisory starts 10 p.m. Wednesday night in all of the central and northern coastal regions and the San Francisco-Oakland area, the Sacramento Valley. South winds will gust to 45 miles an hour and last through Thursday morning. Then I'll mention this right here around Klamath Falls, Alturas, wind advisory Wednesday night, Thursday, Friday, Friday night. Southwest winds gusting to 55 miles an hour, also in the Shasta Valley, high wind warning in effect all day Wednesday into Thursday morning for south winds gusting to 60 miles an hour. That will affect parts of Interstate 5. And then for the Pacific Northwest, mild weather prevailing today. Afternoon highs reach the 40s and 50s in the northern interior, 60s across southern Oregon into the Snake River Valley. And of course, we've mentioned those wind advisories, the high wind warnings, and so on. So this weather system out to the west will have an impact on some parts of the Pacific Northwest. Temperatures tonight will fall to the 30s and 40s in most areas. You're hard-pressed to find a freeze anywhere except in the mountains 
and in the higher elevations of the Rockies. Of course, burns, they're always cold. They'll fall to 30 degrees for tonight. Then for tomorrow, another mild day, 60s reaching up into Portland and into the Blue Mountains as well. We head out west into the Pacific and we get a look at that next weather system. The pocket of cold air that is driving that cold front is right there in the middle of the Gulf of Alaska. Alaska itself, very quiet, very cold as well. Temperatures in the single digits in most areas. 20s up there around Barrow and 20s down south as well. Kind of interesting. Anchorage and Barrow are pretty close. In fact, Barrow is a little bit warmer. No warnings to talk about unless you count the southern and central Bering Sea. Gale warning for today due to southeast winds gusting to 40 miles an hour. Across Canada, not very much going on in the west. The Haynes Road and the Klondike Highway, they have snowfall warnings that continue there, mostly around the passes. Quiet across central Canada. Let's get a better look at that. Just westerly flow and temperatures in the 30s. Then in the Maritimes and Newfoundland, Labrador, all of that, getting that rich tropical moisture. Dew points up close to 60 degrees in southern Newfoundland. We're expecting another round of 1 to 1.5 inches in southern Newfoundland. Of course, wind warnings along the coast. Snowfall warnings further north in Labrador from Churchill Falls to Churchill Valley. And we have an assortment of blizzard warnings in the northern Quebec communities around Ungava Bay. So now we start taking a view towards the forecast. You may ask, why do I go on and on about today's weather? It's not to go over trivia or news. It's to get us grounded in what the patterns are doing and how everything is set up. Because you can't really know where you're going unless you know where you've been. So... Let's take a look at those dynamics, 500 millibar heights and vorticity. This is up at about 5 kilometers, about 3 miles up in the atmosphere, 18,000 feet. Ridging on the west coast, so no wonder there's lots of fair weather in that part of the country. Northwesterly flow through the rest of the U.S., and we have this channel jet dividing this cyclonic vorticity to the left side of the jet from the anti-cyclonic vorticity to the south. So that's the polar front jet extending down into the Atlantic seaboard. Okay, we run the maps forward and we see the increasing southerly flow. That is significant for California because that deepens the moisture and brings up more warm air. So all of that is conducive to precipitation. And we start getting the heavy dynamics themselves starting late Wednesday night into Thursday morning initially affecting this area along the coast. And as the day goes on through Thursday, those heavy dynamics shift gradually into Southern California. And by Friday, we find them in the Los Angeles area. Now, keep in mind that the main polar front jet is out ahead of this area of low heights, that upper level low. So this is the area that we're looking at for Bear Clinic development. And very likely, we're going to find that Pacific front starting to move inland through Southern California, through the Sierras, and into Nevada. So that's what's going to take place on Friday. And gradually things move inland for Saturday, affecting Arizona, the Four Corners area, although they're not going to get very much precip up there. Most of the better dynamics are well to the south, and gradually this upper level low will push into the central plains for Sunday and Monday. Round two well south of California for Tuesday and Wednesday, and that will take up residence just south of the desert southwest and presumably will move into Texas for the 22nd and the 23rd. And it's worth mentioning all this. We're so focused on California. Let's back that up a little bit. All right, what's going to happen? Initially, we have northwesterly flow east of the Rockies, the ridging moves across, nice warm-up for a late week. And then we get a series of waves grazing the Dakotas for Saturday into the Great Lakes. Very strong channel jet through here. Here comes the main upper level low ejecting northeast, moving through the central plains. Increase in precipitation for Monday 
And that low crash we moves on off. Very compact, small system into the Carolinas. Here comes our next system. That's a digging jet. And there it goes into the Colorado area, digging into the base of this long wave trough. And that moves also into the Carolinas as well. So kind of a succession of various waves moving across all of the country. And I did want to go to this, the integrated vapor transport. This shows us how our atmospheric rivers are set up. Nothing for tonight, not very much for Wednesday. But for Wednesday night, there it is. Atmospheric river, IVT is about 800 to 900. And that will affect the Eureka, Fort Bragg, Arcata, maybe up to Newport area. And then gradually shift into San Francisco for Thursday morning. And then to Southern California for Friday. You can see those values starting to taper off as we start depleting the moisture. However, there is enough moisture and dynamics for up to half an inch to an inch in the valleys and two to four inches in the hills and mountains. And of course, above 6,000, that will be in the form of snow. Round two, this takes a circuitous track into Arizona and the Four Corners. Not very much associated with that. Then we look on the other side for the development of the Great Plains low-level jet. A little bit of evidence of something right there, although this looks a little bit veered. The type of low-level jets associated with severe weather, those tend to be a little bit more north-south. And we'll just take you through the end of the period. Not very much going on. Another low-level jet in Texas Thursday into Friday, shifting into the southeastern U.S., so maybe another chance of severe weather, although this kind of looks like northwesterly flow, which is not great for thunderstorms. All right, we better look at that forecast because we are running pretty late. So going into tomorrow, we see that precipitation picking up on the west coast. There it is, the rain approaching northwest California for late Wednesday night. Thursday, we're going to see extensive rain and mountain snows all through the west coast region, expanding into Idaho and Nevada. Could see a few embedded thunderstorms in northern California and the coastal ranges into the Shasta Valley. And we go into Friday. Now we're starting to track into the southwest deserts. Pretty good chance of rain and snow in the northern and central Rockies and the Intermountain region. The best precip amounts, however, north of Phoenix, where we're expecting about 1 to 2 inches of rain, about half an inch to 1.5 in the lower elevations. Then for Saturday, modest rain chances across much of the central U.S. This will be a somewhat dry system, so I'm not sure what that's going to do for Texas and Oklahoma. Cold air flowing in the back of that for Monday and Tuesday. However, not a very impressive system, 10, 20 millibars. Here comes round two, well to the south. We see another outbreak of cold air for late next week, the 20th, and... We could see a few storms along that front, but again, that doesn't look like the optimal setup. And that concludes our look at the forecast. That's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. I want to thank our many Patreon supporters. And keep in mind, you can help support this program by going to weathergraphics.com. That is my own website. And there you can pick up my books and software. There should be something for everybody there please check it out. All right, we'll see you back here for another edition on Friday. Take care and we'll see you soon.